What's good YouTube? Welcome back for episode 7 of Survival Tutorial. In this episode we're going to work on our resource generation. So we're going to go ahead and build an industrial miner. And in order to keep the miner powered up we're going to have to work on our electricity generation as well. So now that we've got our production up we need to worry about getting the resources needed for the production. So today we're going to actually work on building a larger miner. Than what we currently have that way we can fill these refineries up a little bit better i recommend getting into this as soon as you can that way you don't have to keep making so many trips back and forth and as of now we don't quite have the iron output that we need either so we're gonna probably end up picking up some iron while we're at it so we're gonna start with a small grid vehicle just like we did in the last episode but Instead of doing a forward facing drill like we have on the last one that we built here, we're going to actually work on doing some vertical drills. That way it's a lot easier to control and a lot easier to fly. The reason we didn't do this one to start with is because it takes quite a few materials to do it this way. And I recommend getting a smaller miner up in order to get the materials that you need for this one. So what we're going to need in this one is going to be, we're going to go for a few large cargo containers. We're going to need gyros as usual, we're going to need batteries, we're going to need a cockpit, we're going to need drills, we're going to need small conveyors, we're going to need a connector, and we're going to need atmospheric thrusters. We're going to need both small and large atmospheric thrusters here, so let's go ahead and put the large one on the bar, that way we can switch between it. Okay, so the first thing you want to place here is going to be the large cargo containers. The number one thing to think about with the, these large cargo containers is we want one of these small outputs to be on the bottom here and we want one on the back, one large one on the back and one large one on the front. The reason I want to do this is that way we can connect all of the cargo containers up with the large ones and use the small one for the drill on the bottom and use the ones on the back for connector so we can connect to the base. So that's all that really matters in this. So we're just gonna copy that same setup for that one and reverse it for the ones to the side. We're gonna use about four of these large cargo containers here. So just remember that. Most of what I'm doing here is just for looks purposes about the lineup of them. All that really matters is that we've got one small one on the bottom to connect to the drills and then we've got a large one in the back to connect to our connector okay so the first thing that we want to do is we want to place our batteries and I'm trying to figure out where the best placement for the batteries would be I want it to be slightly symmetrical because I'm going to be a little bit picky about the way this looks but we need to make sure that we've got enough because we're gonna have a lot of thrusters on this thing so I'm thinking doing something along this line would probably be the best bet that way it looks symmetrical still okay so that's going to give us a grand total of nine batteries we are going to be running two large thrusters per large cargo container that seems to be about what we want is two large thrusters per cargo container because two of them can lift an entire cargo container full so just remember that so that's the down thrust that you want so we're going to go ahead and start placing those while we're thinking about it. The reason I'm placing these now is that leaves me room for moving or maneuvering around with the drill platform that we're going to do on the bottom. So that's six thrusters there that we have and that should leave us... I'm trying to figure out how we want to do this. I think we're going to have to move these over. That way we can fit another one in there and maybe move these up. Actually, I think I've got it figured out. Like I said, we're going to want two of these thrusters per container. So we need eight thrusters total. Yeah, so if I put three on each, either side here, just like this, I can put two up front here. And that would work out perfectly. Nice and symmetrical. Okay, good. So the next thing we're going to need to think about is where we're going to place our cockpit. This is where we're going to be flying the ship from. And we will be flying this ship, by the way, just so you know. So uh, 
you're going to want a good place for it. I think right here may be a good spot. We don't necessarily need to worry about where we place it. Oh, the only problem is it's not going to be symmetrical through here. So, okay, because of the way that this lines up, we're not going to be able to get it symmetrical. So I'm just going to use one off to the side here. I guess that'll be our best bet. And it, it's, it's an industrial ship, so it doesn't matter if it looks a little bit off on that. And we're going to have to worry about placing our gyroscopes as well. We're going to need a few gyroscopes here. So I'm just going to go ahead and add four. It's always best to add extra gyros than you need. That way, if you don't need all of them, you can get rid of a few. And the next thing we're going to need to worry about is the connector back here. So we're just going to place the connector right here on the very back on one of those large ports that we saw. And then we're going to have to start thinking about our drill system. I don't think we're high enough up for the drills at the moment. So let's just go on and find out. So our center point would be... Looks like about right there. And although it's not necessary to put one on each one of these, I'm going to go ahead and do that just to be on the safe side. Because I want to add some way to get rid of the excess stone as we go as well so that's why i'm going to go ahead and add extras here and that's also why i'm using there we go that's also why i'm using the small conveyors instead of the conveyor tubes okay now that we have that done it's time to go ahead and start thinking about where we're placing our other thrusters here. We're gonna need some thrusters towards the back, which I'm gonna go with the small thrusters here. I'm gonna put three there, two there, and do the same thing over here. That way we've got nice forward acceleration. I'm putting two over here. That, that way we've got some slowdown acceleration. Actually, let's go ahead and just fill this spot up with these as well. We're going to go slightly asymmetrical here. So for those of you who like asymmetry, this should look pretty good. This will give it more of an industrial look. Okay, so we've got slightly more forward acceleration than we do reverse. So that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, now we need to worry about our side-to-side -side acceleration. So we're just going to place one there and one right below it and do the same thing on this side. That's one of the good things about using these batteries. The way that we did is they give us nice little ports for our thrusters. And here. So that'll be at least four thrusters in every direction now I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple up thrusters here just in case I decide to use autopilot in the future which we're gonna have we're gonna cover the autopilot uh, in a future episode coming up pretty soon when we start going to space okay so I think this one should be good it's time to go ahead and get this one queued up and ready to weld so I'll be right back with you when uh, all the welding's done while I'm working here before I get my thrusters working I want to bring up a point that was brought up in the comments we need to go ahead and take this rotor that we have over here and make sure it is on rotor lock that way our vehicle over here doesn't decide to spin around if we bump into it too hard or anything like that it's always a good idea to lock the rotors if you're not using them and just remember this is an opportune time to actually use the welding ship that we built in the last episode this is the perfect thing to use it for is something along this line it'll speed up your process quite a bit as you see so that one took a while we've got everything welded up and ready to go so we can now Come back in here. I did cut off the inertial dampeners. I don't want to forget like I did last time. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this thing loose so we can move it. Now, one thing we're going to have to worry about very, very, very soon 
is the fact that we don't have enough power generation at the moment and we're pretty much running low on ice there so what I want to do is first off I'm gonna get a load of ice up from the ship here and we don't want to be completely reliant on ice what we want our ice to be is more of a backup than anything so as soon as possible basically as soon as we get this thing done I'm gonna go ahead and get a load of ice just to supplement for now and then we're gonna work on power generation after that which is gonna be a big deal the, the sooner we can get that going the better off we are okay so now for this what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want to grab our small conveyor so let's go on and queue up a, bu a bunch of plates and stuff for this okay so now that we've got our plates and we're good to go we're gonna go ahead and start putting the drills in now so with the drills the way we want to do this is we want to bring them down a little bit just to be safe we want them kind of far away from our platform here and there's a specific spacing we can do with the drills that'll help out quite a bit so I'm gonna go ahead and check on the spacing here and see where we're at so we're running into a slight symmetry issue issue here so we're gonna have to be off to the a uh, little bit off to the side for this because we needed to find the center but because these are an even number of blocks wide that's impossible to do we could probably put some spacing in between and fix that problem but I don't think it's worth it since we've got everything built already so basically what's going to happen is right here is going to be our focal point and we're going to build all of our drills off of here now there is a specific distance that is best for these drills so we're going to put a conveyor here and then we're going to put one tube and then another conveyor there's a reason i'm doing this this way we can connect all of them up in a grid pattern now there is an optimal placement for these drills so we want three spaces in between here and two spaces in between front to back there's an actual reason for this we've done some testing and if you want to see the test video that i did for it click the annotation up in the upper right hand corner of your screen now but basically what we did is we tested to see what the optimal drill distance was and we realized that you can go three by two and that would be the optimal drill distance between them so there is science behind this I don't know exactly why that works out but it does so basically we would want two in between here so that's one and then two and then boom just like this so three in between then two in between and we can make as many drills as we want but we're not gonna we're gonna fill this thing up pretty fast with what we've got here so I think nine drills should be plenty so basically this is how we're gonna set it up I'm just gonna run this in a grid pattern almost which means I'm gonna need some more interior plates there we go so i'm gonna go three by three in this setup here so i'm just gonna move actually we're gonna go four by three because we want to make sure we clear the entire structure here that's the key we just need to make sure that we've got enough room to where we can draw straight down and not have to worry about anything here hitting so three by four i believe should be perfect so i'm just going to continue this pattern along the way here okay it seems like our platform's finally big enough here so we went with it was a three by five grid this is gonna fill up super fast so that's perfectly okay um, the more drills you have the faster it's gonna fill up just makes sense right so what we did here was we built a grid large enough to cover the entire ship and with this spacing here it allows us to drill straight down without having any leftover material with a left click drill so that way we don't have to worry about leaving any material behind and getting caught on anything so i'm going to go ahead and get all of this queued up and welded for you okay now that we're severely outpacing the amount of electricity that we can make and we have a limited amount of ice at the moment because of the way that the drills are set up 
what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add some wind turbines up here. So if you use this pattern right here, because the fact that you need a specific number of blocks clearance, I'm not exactly 100% sure what which one it, or how many blocks clearance in order to make these the most efficient that you can. But I do know that this pattern right here works quite beautifully. As long as you're high enough up, high enough up in the air, you can make this pattern as many times as you want and it'll actually have enough wind clearance to be at maximum efficiency. So it's basically like a cross pattern almost with one sticking straight up. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of this stuff up and running so we can start charging our batteries because that's the number one problem we have right now is it's taking the batteries forever to charge. And we're just going to we're going to do this one setup for now, see how this goes, and then we may add more in the future. But if you're looking for extra wind power generation, this is the setup you'll want to use. Okay, so we seem to have done a decent job of actually fixing our power issue for now. It's got one hour recharge, so what I could do is let this charge up for a few minutes and then I'll go across and grab some of this snow that we've got over here. I want to try to keep the ice as clean as possible. I'll just grab some of that snow that we've got over there and toss it into here. So let me go ahead and give this one an ice pickup area. I'll just add a connector to the end here. Okay, I believe we may have enough power now to go ahead and pick up some of the ice. We're not going to pick up a full load or anything, so we should be all right. I'm going to go ahead and add this connector. Let me find out which connector this is. And name this one Big Drill. Add that to our bar so we can disconnect safely. And we're going to need the drills attached as well once we disconnect here. Now with this one, what I like to do is just use the block tools for the drills here. And go ahead and put them on. That way we can right or left click and just roll with that because we're not going to be automating this at all. And it's super easy to drill with it. So I'll show you what we're going to do here. We're just going to fly on over to the ice. That way we don't scar up our lake here and we're just going to drag across a little bit and just pick up a quite a large load of ice here that way we can start using the supplementary power generation that we've set up okay so we're going to grab from the edge of the lake here we don't have anywhere close by to go other than the lake to get ice so we're just going to go ahead and drag the lake just a tiny bit here just to get enough ice to help out with the power generation just to get everything charged up better. So all I'm doing is holding down the control for a small drill and moving forward. And we just picked up quite a bit of ice off of that. So we're just going to go, might as well actually grab some real ice here just to show you. I think we've got enough power to make it. So just regular click drilling. drilling straight down and there we go we should have pretty much a full load here i'm not 100 percent certain i didn't pay attention to all of that but we've got yeah looks like a full load here already so we are good to go back to the base this thing will be a little bit slow because we didn't overcompensate for anything i may add some more thrust on this later we'll figure that out and just head on back to the base and dock up with the ice area over there so we can use that to create more power and get these batteries. I think we're going to need more gyros on this as well. So if you're still building yours, go ahead and add an extra, I'd say two gyros. That way it's a lot easier to control on the turns. Okay, so we should be filling up our tank now. Yes, we are. I'm going to let this tank fill completely up and then I'm going to take the excess ice and one thing to do is if you want to have an entire tank full of hydrogen at all times if you hit stockpile here that'll basically make sure that this tank stays full 
and you can do the auto refill as well that way you've always got hydrogen left over and just run the engines off of the excess ice that you have after you fill your tank that's probably the smartest route to take so i'm going to wait for this to fill up and i'm going to once that's done i'm going to go ahead and cut the engines on so we can power some stuff up a little bit better okay so i got a little tiny bit of charge on here and i'm running i ran out of iron i'm actually working on increasing the amount of ice that we can process at any given time so I'm just going to right click drill down here at the iron just to get down to the iron level and show you how to use this drill effectively. So what you want to do is you want to right click drill down to the deposit in which you're trying to pick up. And basically just open up the deposit. Get as close to it as you can that way you don't have to dump a bunch of stone which there is a way to get rid of the stone and we will cover that probably in the next episode so let me hop out of here and cut down this tree real quick you can cut down the trees with your grinder which helps out quite a bit or you can hit them with the vehicle it doesn't actually do any damage to rovers i know i'm not a hundred percent sure i haven't tried testing it with the with the flying vehicle but i know a rover it does not affect so I'm just right click drilling so that'll be your secondary action on your controller. And just getting down to where I've unlocked the iron. That way I don't pick up a bunch of stone right now. I'm being very careful not to go too far so yeah we're far enough here so I'm just gonna left click mine here down through the iron and this should be enough just this one little swipe should be enough to fill us up for the most part and I'm gonna drill through until I get through the iron and then come back up we ended up getting quite a bit of iron on that run so I'm gonna in the interest of not running out of energy here I'm gonna go on and fly back to the base and I'll meet you back there Okay, so we got plenty of iron and we can finish this up. I've already gotten, looks like four of them built. I'm just waiting on the last two to be built. Let's check in on our hydrogen here. We are at 59% on hydrogen and I believe we may be out of ice. Yeah, we're out of ice, so I'll have to go pick some more up once I get some power built up here okay I'm gonna go ahead and let this power up in between episodes glad you enjoyed the video go ahead and drop a like to let me know that you did if you want to make certain that you catch the next episode go ahead and click the subscribe button and the little bell notification down on the bottom also if you want to see more space engineers tutorials go ahead and click one of the two videos on your screen now thank you have a nice day